Hi there, my name is Jessica Drossen, and I create textures and overlays for photographers. Today I'm going to show you how I use my overlays for clouds in instances where I want to add a little more drama. So I'm going to be showing you clouds from the second pack of cloud overlays. Just in case there's any confusion, pack one and pack two are not thematically different. Both contain a variety of clouds that were shot with different lenses in different conditions, at different perspectives. So um, what we're gonna do is, first of all, show you how to grab the clouds. So uh, once you've downloaded them, uh, they're all JPEG images, and you can store them wherever it's convenient for you on your hard drive or on a, an external drive, wherever uh, it's safe. I would recommend that you also back up these overlays as well. So I'm gonna look through my bridge and find an overlay that I want to work with. Uh, in this case, I'm going to pick, uh, we'll go with the Beyond. I double click it. Um, just really quick, each image that I'm including has a clean version and what I'm calling a dirty version that includes uh, some light, subtle texture work. And basically, you can pick whichever one works best for you. Some people I know definitely prefer a clean edit, so these are, are clean. I sometimes, if I decide at the end of the editing process that I want to integrate a cloud, I prefer to use one that already has a little bit of texture added to it. It just helps me feel like I'm seamlessly integrating it uh, a little bit nicer. So anyway, here we go. We have our we have our cloud, the Beyond, and there's a couple ways you can grab it. You can either just take your move tool and push, you know, select your image and then drag it over, uh, or you can, I'm just going to delete this because I'm just showing you, uh, you can also open it up, select it, go to select all, and then under edit, you can say copy, and then go to your main image, and under edit again, say paste. Okay, now we have our cloud image, but uh, we were missing our model, so I'm going to click the eyeball off, and what I'm going to do now is select my background image. And for this particular image, I think I'm going to use my magic wand tool. There's a variety of different ways that you can create a mask, but uh, for this particular image, I think the fastest way will be to use my magic wand tool. I'm going to set it to a tolerance of between 25 and 30. Uh, anything higher than that, is less specific in color in the area that it selects. Anything smaller than that becomes more specific in adhering to the, the sample that you select. So let's try it at 30. You might want to play around with it. And as you can see, it does a pretty good job. Uh, if I hold down the Shift key, I can go in and just select a little bit more area. If for some reason I needed to deselect something, I would just hold down the Option key, and then you see a little minus sign. So Shift gets the plus sign and the minus sign for deselecting something that you don't want in there is by pushing down the Option key, at least on a Macintosh. Okay, so once I'm happy with the image selection, I'm going to go here to Select. I'm going to go to Modify. I'm going to go to Expand, and I'm going to expand it by anywhere between 2 to 3 pixels. What I'm going to do now is, I like my selection area, so I'm going to go back to my cloud. I'm going to turn my cloud black on. And what I'm going to do now is go to my mask tool. So my cloud is selected. Here's my mask tool. I just click the button, and boom, there is my overlay. Now, in some of the ones that I did earlier, I actually already fine tuned this. What I did was I just zoomed in. And basically, within the mask itself, grab my little paintbrush, and where you want the cloud to appear, you paint with the white brush. And that is going to soften those little areas where I think you're seeing my original just plain blue. Uh, anywhere where maybe there's, there's some cloud that you don't want, you would take your black brush, and again, within the layer, you would paint over those areas. 
because black in a mask uh, makes you not be able to see what's in the layer. White in the mask allows you to see what's going on. 